Hey, what's up guys, it's Seb from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at creating a neon effect in Redshift. So this week we're gonna take a look at creating this interesting neon effect in Redshift. There's a couple ways you can go about doing this. Both have their advantages and disadvantages, and it mostly depends on how you want to animate it that will dictate which route you go. So let's get started. I took the logo of the W, and I stuck it inside of a CV chamfer. I have my chamfer set to four. We'll give you this. Another way of going about doing this is you can take your spline so you select the points that you want to chamfer. In our case, I wanted to do the outsides and the inside corners. And then I went to mesh, spline, chamfer. And then I set the chamfer to the size I wanted, which was four. And I hit apply. And there you go. There's another way of doing that. And then I stuck that inside of a sweep nerve. And I made two sweep nerves. I made an interior one that was just a solid tube. And then I made an exterior one that the profile looks like this mimicking the glass where you have an inside surface and an exterior surface. So then I hit C on the keyboard and made it editable. And this is a good time to talk about the two different methods that you can use. So when rendering this out, you can use two different methods. You can use an incandescent shader, which is a route that I took because I wanted to animate it using a vertex map. Or you can use a mesh light. Mesh lights are more efficient at render time, but you're limited to how you can animate it. And in my case, since I wanted to animate it with a vertex map, a mesh light would not have worked. I could, however, have animated using uh, my original sweep nerves, but I didn't want to have a hard edge as part of my animation, so I opted for a vertex map. So I took the object, I went to select, and then I went to set vertex weight, and then I set that to zero, which will give you a solid red vertex map. Then I went into my vertex map and I selected use fields and that by default will give you a freeze. So then I took this and I set the freeze to grow and I grabbed an object. In this case, I created a sphere and this sphere is going to start the growth of my vertex map. So I just animated this sphere touching here and then in my vertex map, I added the sphere here. So if I play that through, you can see when the vertex map touches, It just grows throughout the object. Now you can set the distance that the sphere can go out. I have it set to 20, so it doesn't even have to touch 20 centimeters outside the shape. It'll start affecting this object. Now I took this and I wanted to break up the edge a little bit. So I created two random fields. My first one is wavy turbulent noise set to field space. And then I just mess with the scale see what it looks like here. And then I created a second one, and this is what this one looks like. And I took this one, and inside my vertex map, I subtracted the second one from the first one. And see, this is what the effect is. I'm just breaking up a little bit more. And then I'm adding that to my freeze. And then I'm adding a freeze on top of it to clip it all. And then here, I'm using the sphere at the very top. So when that animates, you can see what happens here. And see it's breaking up at the very edge and then slowly filling in. So that's it for the setup portion of this. Now let me show you how we did this in the shader. So if we look at the shader, I created two materials. I created a regular material that is, is just a glass material. And then I created a second material that's just an incandescent shader. And then I added a Fresnel. And I'm using the Fresnel to map the color of the incandescent shader. And then I'm pumping both of those into a material blender. I'm taking my basic glass and putting that into the base color. And then I have my incandescent into layer one. And I have my vertex map. In this case, I'm using it as a mask to reveal my incandescent material. And that goes into blend color one. If you look here, there's layer one. And then I'm using my vertex map here to reveal this over the top of my base color. And that's it for the shader. It's really pretty simple. And then I created a basic glass for the exterior portion of it. I went into the presets here and just said glass. I didn't even tweak any of the settings. So now I've got my setup. I took this and I animated the camera and I rendered a couple passes. I rendered one this way with the incandescence. But like I said, the incandescence really slows down the render process and I wanted it to be brighter. So I rendered a second pass 
Same camera move, but instead of animating it, I'm using a mesh light so that I can slowly bring up the color as if the other one is lighting it up. And once you composite those two together, this is what you get. Let me show you what the mesh light setup looks like. So I'm going to duplicate this real quick and I'm just going to show you. So for a mesh light, you go to Redshift, Lights, and go to Area Light. And then in the Area Light, there's a tab down here where it says Area. You go down here and you change this from Rectangle to Mesh. And you can grab your mesh. And you drop that in there. And that's it. Now it's a light. And you can change your color. In our case, it was yellow. So once you set your color and your mesh, you also have to set the light to be visible. So that when it renders out, you can actually see it. So let me show you my final setup. And my final setup has a little more complicated model, more complicated lighting setup. So I created these three white reflectors. This is just a plane with a white shader on it. And my white shader is set to emission. I have an emission weight of one. That's just so that I make sure that it's completely white. And then I have a tag on each one of these. these are, this is just a redshift tag. And in the redshift tag, I have visibility override turned on and I have primary visibility turned off. This is the same thing as if you would go into like a cinema tag and set it to compositing and set it not to be visible by camera. So I'm going to turn those off for a second to show you the rest of the stuff that's in here. So then I have a dome light in here. And the only thing I have set up on this dome light is this HDR. And I'm using it to give the glass some reflection and some character. And then, like I said before, I set up an area light as a mesh light. And I rendered one pass with it on and one pass without it. And then I added these two little rubber grommets in here. The parts that go into the casing always have like this rubber black piece on them. So that's why I did that. So that's it for this week. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe down below. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog and the store at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we will see you next week.